Hi, yogis. Hi, friends. Welcome to our practice on this special day, Mother's Day. I want to acknowledge all the moms out in the audience and all the moms that have made us who we are today. I have a picture of my mom in the corner over there. Her name is Jerry, and she was a treasure. I got a lot of really good stuff from my mom, a lot of compassion, a lot of ability to hug, uh, to connect with people, to listen to people, to be interested in what people have to say. So my mom's been gone 10 years now. I think of her every single day and I'm just grateful for all that she instilled in me. Uh, maybe some of you didn't have a mom that was so loving or your mom has been gone for a very long time. This is a day too to maybe acknowledge other women in our lives that have been like moms and have cherished us and have helped us on the right path as well to all those wonderful women out there too. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, wanted to just make one point here. You guys can see my dog here. Come here in the background. It's a phenomenon now. It's transcended just from humans to dogs as well. I come into this room and feel so good with the smell of my incense and all the things I've talked about, the warmth and just the familiarity. Well, I've noticed that my dogs do the same thing now too. So when I come in here to set up before we go on, uh, they both come in here, the other one's right over here, and they feel the same kind of vibes. So I'd love for you to try to inspire that in your houses as well, a special little spot where you can go and we can kind of forget about everything else for a while and just attend to our breath, attend to our physical bodies and take really good care of ourselves. Okay, so let's go ahead and find a comfortable place to begin. You know the idea to put yourself in a seated place where you can allow your body to start to sink in. <clears throat> So finding myself in a comfortable half lotus position. I feel my sit bones touch the earth. I feel again this presence, this place, this anchor and stability point. I feel like I was lowered onto the earth and rising at the same time. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel where you are attached. Take a moment here to explore your internal architecture. Where are you today? Where's the spine? What's happening in the muscles? Is your mind working over time? Where are we starting? Feel the weight of your legs releasing to the earth now. Feel those attachment points at the sit bones. Feel the slight tilt forward of your pelvic bowl position we look for to inspire the rest of the spine to align. Low back has a little arch. We'll draw our low ribs in. Containing the low ribs allows us to open our hearts. Feel the gentle push maybe from behind your heart, letting it rise towards the sky or green colored light emanating. The relaxation of the shoulder blades automatically down the back. Take your hands back behind you, big open arms. Let's go ahead and do a little bear hug to begin with. Go ahead and hug yourself. Maybe feel the presence of your mom. Release your arms, elbows back by the hips, palms up or palms down, receptive versus grounding. The big broad collarbones. The head now aligns itself. It slides right back into its place. Notice here it's kind of hard to take your head forward when the rest of the spine has found its alignment, the head just the cherry on the top. Lift the crown of the head towards the sky, feel the roots into the earth. 
You can feel the presence behind you, the alignment of the back of the skull with the sacrum. Invite your breath now, invitational breath. By invitation only, it's our yogic breath, it's our conscious breath, it's our healing breath, it's our calming breath. I suggest you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth through pursed lips. Inhaling through the nose warms, hydrates, purifies the air, the prana, the life force, the oxygen as we take it in. Maybe with your eyes closed, you can feel it as it comes in through the back of the nose, down into your windpipe, into the lungs, deep down into the lungs, to the deepest levels. Oxygen, prana is exchanged there at those deep levels, the alveolar beds for carbon dioxide, the exhaust, all the things we want to get rid of in our minds and in our bodies. This is your opportunity. Find the rhythm of your breath here today, inhaling through the nose, holding the breath for a second and exhaling through the mouth through the pursed lips, long, slow, deep, intentional breath. Trying to make your exhalations maybe twice as long as your inhalations. It is on the exhalation that we inspire relaxation and calm in our system. The longer we exhale, we lower the blood pressure, we lower our heart rate, and our brains get the signal, we can relax. There's the science. Now, see if you can find the energetics and the, the rhythm. Let's sit for a minute or so, find your breath, and let's see if maybe we can unite our breath as we sit all over the world. Before you open your eyes, take your thumbs and cross them like bird wings. Place them lightly over the center of the chest on the heart chakra. It's our compassion center. Feel your heart beating inside your chest. Feel the warmth emanating from this beautiful heart center. Let's stop for a moment here and feel our humanness. Feel our connection. Our collective consciousness, our like mindedness. Blink your eyes open at the front of your mat. Bring the gaze back up. Let's go ahead and release the hands back behind us. Touch the earth. Fingertips touch down, energetic prongs. Fingertips, sit bones, press into the earth. Feel the energy, the muscular activity through your spine. There's an energetic tube that lays right in front of your spine. See if you can feel the different colors in the chakras and the energies moving through that energy tube. As you inhale, the tube plumps up like a garden hose getting filled up with water. And as you exhale, it releases and all of the energies dissipate. Inhale, bring it in. Exhale. Let it out. Good. 
Take your hands up to the sky. Reach up. Fingertips to the sky. Wide palms. Send up all your best energies. Bring your hands a little closer together, like you're squeezing an imaginary energy globe. Pull those low ribs in. Let's see if we can back bend our upper backs. Find some space behind the heart, up into the neck. Watch your thumbs as they go back behind you a bit further. Then go ahead and put your ears by your elbows, touch your palms together, and let's make our steeple hands index to the sky. Elbows squeeze ears, ribs stay in nice and aware, and back bend the upper back. Let's get rid of the roundedness from the sitting and the cooking and all the forward posture. Press your palms together, inhale, and on the exhale, slowly lower them down through main central. Touch the third eye, the tip of your nose, your lips, your throat, and back to our hearts. Spin the hands open, touch the floor, and turn your hands backwards now. Promote the external rotation in the shoulder. We're going to be working today a lot on our shoulders and upper backs. Think dissociated movement. We talked about that in the past. Just the ball moving in the socket. Take your hands a little bit further back. Good. Take your hands across from your hips now. Press your fingertips into the ground for our neck release. Inhale. Exhale, right hand holds the floor. Most of you are quite familiar with this now. Let the left ear release towards the left shoulder. It softens, right? The weight of your head and gravity allowing it to happen. Your awareness to your sensations to let things free up as they start to evolve. Inhale the head back up and on the exhale, other side. Left hand holds the floor, right ear, right shoulder. Think of the shape of your spine on this side, a nice side bend. Inhale the head up, and on the exhale, we keep the chin on the horizon line, look left. Promote the rotation in the seven vertebrae in your neck. See if maybe you can look back behind your shoulder. Inhale back through center, and on exhale, around to the right. Chin on horizon for safety. Inhale back through center, glide through, same side on left. And then if you choose to go a bit deeper, inhale. On the exhale, right hand holds the floor. Chin will move out towards her to that left shoulder point. Inhale the head back up. On the exhale, right hand turn. Inhale, exhale, left hand holds the floor, bring the chin out towards her to right shoulder point. Inhale back through center on the exhale, tuck your chin, jugular notch between the two collarbones. See if you can find that little shelf that that mandible fits into. And let's trace our collarbone. Inhale and on the exhale, trace your chin along the line of your right collarbone. Keep it in contact with the collarbone. When you start to lose contact, that's where you stop. Maybe you'll complete it all the way around to the shoulder blade. Inhale it back through center and on the exhale, left hand turn. Chin on collarbone, a tight chin tuck. Inhale the head back to center and on the exhale, press the hands and sit bones into the earth, lift the crown of your head to the sky, push the heart forward. Don't let your head drop back. Slowly think of the front of the neck, the anterior neck from your chin to your collarbones, let that open. And then the head will slowly start to release back from as many vertebrae as you can find. It's a controlled movement. We're looking for the stretch in the anterior neck. No dizziness, no pain allowed. If so, back off. Inhale your head back up. Start position. If you aren't sitting in half lotus, I suggest you switch the cross of your legs now. Uncommon cross. Let's go ahead and float our arms up. Find those long arms. Look over to your right hand and pull it towards your face. Spread the fingers. So look at the fingers. It's abduction of the fingers. See as much space between those fingers as possible. Let's take care of our hands. Push your hand into an imaginary cinder block. You'll start to feel a little buzz. 
Remember, this is our nerve floss. Turn your gaze now over the middle finger of your left hand. Inhale. And on your exhale, take your right hand back behind you. We want this to be buzzy into your fingers, maybe all the way up into your neck, pulling the nerve, that long nerve, through the connective tissues. Good. Bring your head back to neutral, hand to neutral. Turn, look at your left hand, pull it to your face. Spread your fingers wide. Push it into the cinder block. Inhale and on your exhale, turn your gaze over, middle finger, right hand. Take lefty back behind you, leading with the little finger. Bring on the buzz if possible. Warming up our shoulders, getting the nerves to, to floss and release. Good, bring your hands back to neutral. Grab your tennis balls and flap your wings. Find those pterodactyl arms. And then we'll do a little touch down here. Touch the earth and bring them back up. See if you can find these graceful bird wings. Lots of birds here in Michigan. I've been seeing a whole bunch of National, Gra National Geographic out my windows. Egrets and hawks, every kind of bird. Good. Let's take our right on top, left on bottom for your eagle arm. Press your fingers to your palm, your palm to your fingers, tricep flesh parallel to the floor. Inhale, on the exhale, take the right elbow into the left, draw the shoulder blades forward. And let's go ahead and do a little forward bend now. So don't round your spine, but just hinge your hips and come forward a little bit. Good, pull back, neutral position, and take your arms around to the right today. Yeah. See if you can feel the left shoulder blade release a bit. Bring them back to center, and then take them around to the left. So we stretch the posterior rotator cuff, some of our deltoid muscles. Beautiful. Release the arms down, and take them up opposite, left on top, right on bottom. Press fingers to palm, palm to fingers. Inhale. On the exhale, take lefty into righty. Move the blades first. Then hinge your hips a bit. Keep the spine nice and long. Come on back, inhale, exhale, left with the arms. Back to center on the inhale, and on the exhale, right with the arms. Beautiful, bring them back. Let's open them right up into our cactus arms. Turn the thumbs backwards, hitchhiker shoulders. Inhale them up and exhale them down. Dissociate the movement, just the ball rolling in the socket in your shoulders. Bring them back up, thumbs back, and forward, down. Back up on the inhale and on the exhale, we close the fly machine, palms touch, elbows touch, turn your palms to face you, inhale. Exhale, push the sides of the hands and elbows together. Let's take them up in an isometric press. When you come to the point where you can't keep your elbows together, pause there. Take the elbows apart on the inhale and on the exhale, slowly draw them down through that thick fluid. Feel how you're resetting your whole cage. Let's do that a few times, just pushing the sides of the hands and elbows together as you slowly come up in this squeeze. Take it down, last one, back up. Down, elbows into your side pockets, turn your hands real loosely, right? Those light bulb hands, making them as free as possible. Into your queen wave, and then up overhead for your hallelujah arms. Back down to the queen wave, the light bulb hands, and then shake them out. Another nerve floss, take your fingers, okay signs, thumb and index touch, turn the palms up. And then back, this one's good. If you have a carpal tunnel thing going on, the median nerve. Let's turn our arms now into our Birdman mask. So look through your fingers and take your elbows back behind you. Release them back down. Take them back up. Release the elbows back. Yeah, stretch your arms out again, nice and long. Feel how long they are. Turn your palms up now. External rotation with an extended elbow. Turn it, hands in. 
So notice how we're not dropping the chest forward. That all stays up. See if you can find again that isolated movement in the shoulder sockets. Beautiful. Let's do our side bend. Grab, grab at your block, you might need it. Put it off to the right for your elbow. Right hand goes down on the earth. Left hand holds the thigh down. Inhale. On your exhale, start to drop the right elbow towards the earth. See if you can concentrate on opening the waistline. It's not about getting the elbow down at the expense of the knee coming up, but the waistband expanding. If your elbow is far away from the earth, put the block underneath. Once your elbow touches something, bolster up the system, find the stability in that right shoulder and start to back bend the upper back and look up to the sky. Where's the sensation? Inhale the left hand up. And on the exhale, take it across your body. Oh my goodness, into the rib cage, up into the shoulder, the lats. Turn the thumb towards the sky and see if you can see the palm of your hand. Inhale up, bring the block with you if you need it for the other side. Touch down. Left hand on the floor. Right hand holds the thigh down. Inhale. And on the exhale, start to drop the left elbow. Opening up our waistband. Whole side body pulling the shirt from the waistband. You got it. Back bend your upper back. Roll the right shoulder back and look up. Inhale that right hand up and watch it as it comes across the body. Reaching, 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 left hand and elbow are stable. Roll the thumb up, maybe look into the armpit and find that huge side body opening. Nice work, inhale back up, tall sit position. Let's move right into a twist today. Take your left foot under, take your right leg on top. You guys know how to modify this if it's too much. You can have your leg out straight, Maybe sit up on something taller. Take your fist to the earth, lift, put your buttocks down. Try to keep the big toe knuckle right foot on the ground. Have your hand on your knee to start with and big open hard. So just so you know, you cannot twist your spine if it's flexed, it doesn't work. So maybe try it. Let your heart come forward and try to just twist right and left and feel how stuck that is. And if you bring your chest nice and tall, even without a lot of effort, you can see the pieces fit better. All right, take the arms up. Let's do an open twist without our arms. You'll go left, inhale. On the exhale, keep the gaze forward. Yeah, and turn the rib cage. When you feel you've come up through the middle ribs, then let your head start to turn. Let's see if you can see the little finger of your left hand. It's all muscular that got us there. Squeezing all kinds of goodies out of us. Inhale back through center. And on the exhale, make a right hand turn. Low ribs first. Keep the gaze forward as long as you can. Come through the twist. See the little finger of your right hand. Inhale back through center. Exhale left. Twist again, same thing. Maybe you can feel it's, the pattern has been laid down here and the brain has figured out how to make this happen. Let's use the arms now to help. Release your arms, left hand to the floor, right elbow inside of that right knee and use that as your impetus to help to spin like a top, spinning. Inhale back through center, arms up. Exhale around to the right, strengthening those muscles. Release the arms at the end of your journey and continue. Bring it back to center on the inhale. On the exhale, take your hands back behind you, uncross your legs, take lefty on top. Nice down dog, up dog, come here. Press the fist into the ground, lift up, put your sit bones down. Let's do the other side. Hands on the knee, big open heart. Stick them up, inhale. On the exhale, make a right hand turn. Use the muscles, find the twist. Inhale back through center, exhale left. Inhale back through center, exhale right. Really 
twist the arms, use them as a little extra added bonus. Inhale back through center, exhale left, release arms. Back to center, sit for a moment, feel what we've done to our bodies already and our minds. All right, guys, let's get our legs opened up a little bit. And we're gonna go through some thoracic spine opening things as I said at the beginning. Hands underneath the shoulders, foot goes back, curl the toes under, express open the back of the calf, the gastrocnemius muscle that crosses the knee goes down to the Achilles tendon. So if you push the back of the knee to the sky, a little more stretch of that gastroc. Good, draw righty forward, take lefty back. Toes are curled under, heel to the back. Crown to the front, back of the knee, presses to the sky. Let's do our broken toe, knees together, big toes touch, inside ankle bones touch, sit your buttocks back towards your heels. You can slide a block underneath the knees if it's too much, or put a bolster underneath your buttocks. Press your hands into your thighs, pull your lower ribs, and bring your heart nice and tall. See if you can surrender the buttocks towards the heels. This is gonna stretch the soleus muscle, another one of the calf muscles that doesn't cross the knee. Inhale your arms up. Let's take the right, Palm behind the left, squeeze the elbows, ears, ribs in, back bend the upper back. Gentle shift of the palms, left behind right, squeeze elbows, ears, ribs in, back bend. Release your hands to your side. Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers. See if you can have your palms touching and your thumbs and the arches of your feet. Inhale. On the exhale, take the arms straight back behind you. Big open heart, thoracic spine. And let's go ahead and lean forward like a dipping bird. So keep your buttons back on your heels. We're not picking the buttocks up. See if you can keep them back as you bow down, taking the fists towards the sky. And like a teeter-totter, as the fists come down to the earth, your spine returns to its alignment. We'll do one more of those. Shift the blades back. Inhale, exhale, arms extend back. Dip into it from the hips flexing, keeping the curves in our spine. Taking the arms up and then back down. Beautiful, hands come forward, release the feet, kick them out. Sit back for a moment, Virasana. You guys know how to customize this too. Take your hands back behind you, thumbs are on little toes or the sides of your Foot, draw the elbows in nice and tight. Inhale, exhale, lift your buttocks off your heels, and push your pelvis skyward. Stretch the quads, maybe right down to your knees, you can feel it, and up into the thighs. Release the buttocks down, sit bones outside of the heels, pull the belly in, and launch forward our decelerating child. So nothing hits the ground, we lower towards the earth, and when your forehead touches the earth or a prop, bring it back up again, pull the belly in, and find that elegance and grace in our spines. Thumbs back, release back, inhale, exhale, bend the right elbow, look over the right shoulder, some extension rotations. Inhale back through center, bend the left elbow, look over the left shoulder, Back to neutral, inhale on the exhale, slowly lower your child, decelerate to the earth, make it nice and smooth and graceful. Forehead touches, pull the belly in, bring yourself back up, shoulders back, hands back. See if maybe you can come onto the tops of your feet, now take your shins off the ground. Shins come back down, knees go wide, Watch your hands as they walk out on the mat now. So don't just flatten out. This is wide child, but slowly. So left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. And when they've gone out as far as they can go, they're down dog hands, index fingers forward, thumbs towards each other. Change those down dog arms now to sphinx arms. Elbows go down. Feel how the spine starts to open, the shoulder 
releases. Let's see if maybe you put your forehead down on the earth again or on a crawl. Shift your pelvis right and left. See if you can really eke out some good lubrication up in those hip sockets. No pinching allowed. If you're getting pinching, back off of this. Bring your pelvis back to neutral. Let's come up on the inhale, the scared cat. And on the exhale, pull your body weight forward. Press your hands into the earth. Find your shoulder stability as you slowly release the pelvis for our hanging cobra. So no shoulders by the ears. Press into the hands to find the stability. And let's hang out here for a bit. Close your eyes and see if you can figure out where is my spine not extending, what spots. If you got a pinchy low back, put a block under your pelvis. Otherwise, see if you can excavate out where that tightness is. Shine your heart forward. Go ahead and bend your elbows now a bit and put your pelvis down onto the earth. So see if you can inspire some of that extension. Inhale back up through the scared cat. Exhale. Knees go wide, big toes touch, back through that long, wide child, down dog arms, sphinx arms, forehead touches. Shift pelvis right, shift pelvis left, right, left. Stay in neutral here now, so you're in your wide child, and let's move our arms. Walk your arms around to the right. So you can pick your head up for a moment and see your hands walking around to the right. We're not bumping the rib cage over the thigh. It stays trapped in there so we get a nice side bend. When you feel you've gone as far as you can, go ahead and take your left hand and over your right interdigitate the fingers and then see if you can put your forehead back down onto the earth or maybe onto your right knee. Feel the opening left side and right side rib cage. Let's inspire some rotation now. Inhale and on your exhale, look into your left armpit without moving the pelvis, just from the ribs up, and find that really yummy side body rotation opening. Release the heart back towards the earth. Walk your hands back to center. Go ahead and look out at your hands and see if you can take them out a little further. Maybe they're off the mat now as the fabric starts to open. Let's make a left hand turn now. Lefty, righty, lefty, righty. Take them around. Watch your hands. When you've come around as far as you think you can go, take your right hand over your left to interdigitate the fingers. Put your forehead back down on the earth. And then let's try some rotations. Inhale on the exhale. Look into the right armpit and see if you can feel that unwind and release. Beautiful. Release the heart back down towards the earth and take your hands back forward. Let's walk them back up. All right. I want to do two poses here with our blankets. You guys will have to figure out how high your blanket will be. So if you're already starting out with a pretty rounded upper back, you're not going to want a very thick blanket. So maybe just watch real quickly. What I'm going to do is put myself down on the earth here so that my shoulder blades are on the blanket with my armpits above. See how they're above the blanket? And I'm going to place my head on the ground. So my neck is nice and long here. If you do this and you feel like your head is doing this, then you know that this is too high. Just flatten it down a little bit. So go ahead and take a moment here. Find your prop. Lay it horizontally out on your mat. Put your bodies down on. Shoulder blades are on the blanket, armpits above, and your arms are out in a T position, legs still bent. Let's do our crazy legs component with this T-spine bolster or blanket under our backs. So knees together, feet apart. Inhale. On your exhale, let your left knee slide down the inside of your right shin as the legs go over to the right. So not a lot of movement of the right leg so much. It's not just flopping open. We're keeping left knee congruent with right shin. Inhale the legs back up, the knee at the top, and exhale opposite. Right leg slides down inside of left shin. 
We're moving all this energy through our low back, our sacroiliacs, our joints, our hip sockets. Let the legs keep moving side to side. Good, one more to the left, and then bring them back up. Let's change the legs now to Buna Konasana legs. Soles of the feet together, knees out wide. Be sure you're protecting the head and skull. And see if you can allow the outsides of your thighs to just release towards the earth now. Perhaps you can feel it's inspired a nice arch in the low back. Now take your arms now and put them into the same position, the goalpost arms position. So the backs of the hands are on the ground, maybe with the elbows and armpits at 90 degrees. So if you've got tightness in external rotation, your hands will be off the ground. Maybe put some blocks underneath. See if you can open up here, right? So the groins are opening, the chest is opening. It's a vulnerable position, you're safe in your house, see if you can just let things free. Let's add the arms now, the snow angels or sand angel component, inhale, and on the exhale, keep the backs of the hands on the floor as you take your arms up overhead and they join together at the top, index and middle finger will touch like you're lying in the sand or the snow. Inhale and exhale, bring them back down, 90, 90, 90 here, the shoulders, yeah, elbows, and back up again overhead, trying to keep the backs of the hands in contact with the floor. Such good strengthening of our shoulder girdle muscles. Bring them down now, bring the elbows a little further down towards the side body, past 90, and then bring them back up again overhead and let them rest overhead. Straighten out your legs now. Push them down the mat. So Tadasana legs, and our arms are still in this sand angel position. See if you can free this up now. Let your heart open. Allow your back to release into the blanket or bolster or whatever you've got underneath. And then go ahead and straighten out your arms now. Push them up over the crown of your head. Take your right hand around your left wrist and lengthen out. Take your left around your right and lengthen out. Rest for a moment in this beautiful open position. All the energy is moving through you. Rib cage wide open, maybe some burning in the upper back from you taking it out of its rounded place. Good, let's bring the elbows back down. Bring the arms back to your side. Bend your knees, put your feet on the floor, and then roll over onto your right side and press up. What I'd like you to do now is just shift your blanket. Take it vertically on your mat. This time your buttocks will be on the floor, and there'll be a little bit of an arch for your back. So you can lay, let yourself down whatever way you'd like. See if you can meet me on the ground. Most of us, the blankets will be long enough so the back of your skull is resting on the top of the blanket. Your buttocks are on the ground and you got a beautiful arch in the low back, soles of the feet together, Bona Konasana legs. So maybe you can feel what's happened here now. It's not just in your T-spine that you're opening, but you're promoting this beautiful length to your spine and the arch in your low back. Try to straighten out your legs. See if that feels okay for your back. If it's too much, just keep them in Bona Konasana. And then go ahead and take your arms up over your head. Reach to the back of the room. Both arms do the same thing. Hand to wrist, hand to wrist. And feel how long and graceful this body is. Oh. Right, bring your arms back to your side, bend your knees, put your feet on the floor. Let's give ourselves a bear hug again. Take your arms around the rib cage, squeeze in nice and tight, and let your knees rest together, feet apart. Pause for a moment here. It's a very calming position. Find your breath, inhaling and exhaling.
Let's move right into our open book. So bring your feet together. You roll over onto your right side. You can use your blanket here if you'd like to for your head or just slide it out of the way. Hips, knees, and ankles 90 degrees. Lots of you know this one too. Palms together. Inhale. And on your exhale, trace your left hand up your right forearm onto the bicep. Have your right left hand rest on your heart, elbow to the sky. Inhale. On the exhale, initiate with the bottom of the rib cage. We've already done some twisting. See if you can encourage that rib cage to find its way towards the earth. Don't struggle with the left shoulder to crank it down. Keep the hand on the heart to begin. We know how to deepen this now. Bend the right elbow, elbow on the ground, fingertips to the sky, inhale, and on the exhale, push the right elbow into the earth, lift the heart, and see how that encourage more rotation. Same thing, inhale, exhale, elbow into the ground, push and rotate, elbow goes down onto the earth, maybe unfurl the arms like a flag, look towards the left fingertips, Find your breath there. Inhale, left hand up. Grab the cloud off the sky and print it onto the right palm and then slide the left hand through for protracting the shoulder blade, heart towards the earth. Same thing, inhale. Exhale, draw the hand through. Elbow to the sky, hand on the heart. Maybe you can feel the second round, how your brain has Help to figure out how to open this beautiful structure. Beautiful layout for a moment. Then you have the left hand back up. Exhale, take it through, palm slides through. Marry the palms together right into chalk trace. We've got an imaginary piece of chalk in the thumb and index of the left hand. Keep it on the earth, inhale. On the exhale, take the left hand up over the head. Watch it as it goes over the top. If you can't keep your hand in contact with the ground, then stop at that point. If you can complete the full revolution here, take it around. Come into your 180, pause for a moment. Inhale, exhale, trace it back around. Follow your hand with your eyes. The head will rotate. We come back to start position. Inhale. Exhale, right up and over you go. See if maybe second round feels a little bit more open. I told you lots of shoulder and upper back action today. Swing it back around, palms together. Gracefully turn onto your other side. So you were on your right, now you'll be on your left. Use the blanket for your head if you need it. Hip, knees and ankles 90 degrees, palms touch. Inhale, on your exhale, slide your right hand up the forearm, bicep comes to rest on the chest, lift your right elbow to the sky. Try to initiate with the bottom of the rib cage, the shoulder will follow, see where you come to. If you're close to the ground, unfurl the flags. To go deeper in your thoracic spine, we know to bend the left elbow, fingertips to the sky, inhale. Exhale, push the left elbow into the earth. Oh, lift the heart, create the rotation. One more time, inhale. Exhale, push left elbow into the earth and rotate, continue the rotation. Maybe unfurl the flags again. Inhale, the right hand up, grab the cloud off the sky. Send it through to protract. Let's repeat, inhale. Exhale, find this beautiful opening through your T-spine. Mm. Releasing right arm towards the ground. Just pause for a moment, knees stick together for safety in your back. Inhale the right hand back up. Grab the cloud, imprint right into our chalk tracer. Inhale, exhale. Imaginary chalk and thumb and index. It goes on the floor, follow with your eyes as it comes up and over. If you can keep your hand in contact with the ground the whole time, then complete your half circle. Inhale, exhale, bring it back through again, over and around. 
And let's do the same last time. Inhale, exhale, take it up and over. Find that big open rotation. Pause at the extreme. Inhale, exhale, bring it around again. Nice. Okay, let's sit back up. We'll use our blocks for the thoracic opening sequence. My blocks are shorter. You might just use one. These are a little tall here. Maybe I'll just demonstrate with shorts. We've done these before. You'll take your blocks about this distance apart on the ground. Maybe just watch the first one real quick. I come down onto the earth. Put my elbows at the top of the block. My forehead will rest between the blocks and I'll scooch back. I'm going to release my heart towards the earth. We'll do our craze or our karate chop arms and then we'll move down the blocks. So go ahead and start with them on the ground, low level. Take your elbows to the tops of the blocks, palms together. Forehead rest between the blocks, and then scoot back a little bit. Open up your lats. Be careful if your shoulders are hypermobile. Don't go too deep into the shoulders, but this is really an upper back opening, releasing your heart towards the earth. Go ahead and straighten out your elbows now, and then bring the thumbs back into the back of your neck. So we're prying open here our lats and our triceps. We're getting a mobilization in the middle part of your back. Do a few of those. Start to bring the awareness to the spot behind your heart. If that's already challenging, stay there. If you feel like you've got a little more space, then you'll come to the bottom of the blocks with your elbows. The forehead goes on the earth this time, and you'll see it's a little more opening. And then do the same with your karate chop elbows. Nice and slowly, seeing if you can find in your mind's eye the awareness of where the resistance might be, maybe in the tricep flesh, maybe in that middle thoracic spine. For those of you who feel like, nope, this isn't so much, then take your blocks and put them up on the next level, right? So that they'll be up next height. Start the process again. Bring the elbows to the tops of the blocks, forehead between, I think you got the idea, and then do your extensions and flexions, your karate chop arms. I'm gonna give you about a minute to work through where you're at in this. You know if that's still not open enough, move the elbows down to the bottoms of the blocks. Marry the breath with the movement. Remember our breath and our conscious efforts or conscious awareness to the practice is what yields the best benefits. Another 20 seconds or so. And slowly bring your way out of that. I'd like to introduce Vashistasana today. Vashistasana is the side plank. It's an amazing pose for strengthening so much of our shoulder girdle musculature and your core. So I'm going to take you through a progression. Hopefully, you'll find this to be helpful for you. So start on your right side. We're going to do kickstand leg. So left leg is over the right thigh. Now I'm going to start with my elbow down on the earth. And where is it? It's not directly underneath my shoulder. I want to take it forward, so towards the front of your mat a bit, and then also towards the inside of the mat. So in the old days, so to speak, we were taught to stack the shoulder or the elbow right underneath the shoulder. We know better now for congruency 
we take it forward towards the top of the mat and then towards the front of your mat for a better alignment. Start with the karate chop arm again so that we can use the musculature to engage. Push the elbow and side of your hand down into the mat and hopefully you can feel that the stability in your shoulder. Pull the belly in and put your left hand on your left hip. Inhale. On the exhale, push into the elbow a hand and see if you can lift your hips towards the sky. So notice here, we're not caving in. This is all stable here by pushing my elbow and hand into the earth. This might be a lot for many of you, so perhaps you stay here or back off a little bit. For those of you who feel you can do this, take your hand up. Go ahead and look up towards your thumb and pause. Let's deconstruct as we constructed. Hand onto the hip, let your pelvis down. So if that was already enough, do that same exact thing. If you feel like you can, straighten out your underneath leg, straighten out the top leg, the feet are married. Inhale. On your exhale, push the elbow and hand into the earth, pull the hips towards the hand and come into your side plank position. Maybe the hand will go up. Hand comes back down, release the hips, and go back into your kickstand leg. Perhaps you stay there. Third option, straighten the arm. So same thing with your arm here. It doesn't go directly underneath the shoulder. Forward on your mat and forward on your mat. So up and in. Let's do the same, left hand, left hip. Inhale. On the exhale, push your hand into the earth, rise up. Lift the left hip towards the sky, back bend the upper back, look towards the sky, and maybe left hand will go up. A graceful exit. Hand comes down, integrity of right arm stays there, lower your hips back to the earth. I think you can probably figure out the next one. If you feel you've gone through that with grace and ease, then straighten out the legs and we do the same thing. Side plank, hand forward and forward, inhale. On your exhale, push into the ground with the hand, lift the hips, find that belly, core, big opening, maybe your hand will go up and maybe you'll turn your gaze to look at your And back to the hip, slowly releasing down. Switch to the other side, left side now. Start with your kickstand leg, right on top. Left elbow is to the top of the mat a bit and towards the front of your mat. Inhale. On the exhale, push the left elbow, left hand into the earth. Right hand goes onto the hip. Use your foot to help to lift with your kickstand. Try to get the waistline nice and long. Back bend the upper back. Maybe take the arm up. Concentration is a lot on the left arm and on your core, pulling your belly in and your egg up. Deconstruct as we constructed and release your hip to the earth. Stay there or straighten the legs. Inhale. Exhale, push hand and elbow into the earth, pull in your core, lift your hips to your hand, back bend your upper back, arm can go up or not, and look up at your hand. Hand back down, pelvis down, foot back to kickstand. Progress or don't. Hand forward and forward, hand on the hip, Inhale, exhale, push into the earth, raise the hip to the hand, back bend your upper back, look up, take your arm up perhaps. Hand back to the hip, lower the hip back down onto the earth. Perhaps you'll straighten your legs. Same setup with the hands. Hand, inhale. On the exhale, push down into the earth, lift your hips to your hand, back bend the upper back, 
Take the right hand up, look to the hand if possible. Gaze back, hand, slowly lower yourself back down to the earth. I'm asking a lot of you today. We're gonna to do our Sphinx, forearm plank, dolphin. Warmed up, elbows underneath the shoulders, thumbs towards each other, curl your toes under, inhale. On your exhale, bump your body forward, chest is right through the shoulders, inhale. On the exhale, pull the elbows and hands back isometrically towards the hips. Beautiful opening of that thoracic spine and chest wall. Strengthening of the musculature. We'll move right into our forearm plank. So release the pull of the hands and elbows, toes curl under, bump back. Bring the legs together. Bring your hands together. Prayer hands, inhale. On the exhale, push the palms together. Push the elbows into the earth. There's that stability. Come on to your knees. Pull up your belly, pull in your egg, straighten out your right leg, straighten out your left leg. Squeeze an imaginary marble between the buttocks and push your heels to the back of the room for your beautiful plank position. We'll move from plank as gracefully into dolphin as possible. Bend the knees a little bit, start to walk the feet towards the elbows. But as the feet walk towards the elbows, the heart moves back towards the Open that big thoracic spine of yours. Your head's off the ground, it's dangling. A lot of strength in your shoulders and arms for this. Let's bend the right knee and push the left heel towards the earth. Bend the left and push the right heel to the earth. Go back and forth with that a few times. Keep the arch in the back and push the heart through. Let's move back into forearm plank pose. So gracefully, heels back, belly up, crown forward. Slowly, one knee down, the other knee down, pelvis down. Hands back to Sphinx. Inhale, and on the exhale, bump your body weight forward, back into Sphinx pose. Push the hands to the ground, elbows back towards the hips. Release, pump the body back, forearm plank, inhale, exhale, palms press, elbows into the earth, slide the baguettes under the armpits to secure the shoulder girdle. Onto your knees, pull your belly up, pull your egg in, straighten out your right leg, straighten out your left, squeeze an imaginary marble between the butt cheeks here, try to find your best plank, and when you're ready, move into dolphin, heart towards thighs, feet towards elbows. Keep the arch in the back by bending the knees if you need to, if your hammies are a bit tight. You can do the back and forth legs again if you'd like to. Come to rest in your dolphin for a moment, so opening toward T-spine. Walk back into your plank, forearm plank. Put a knee down, put the other knee down, and rest your body down on the mat for a moment. Make some pillow arms. Feel your heart beating. Nice, let's go ahead and push up. Grab your strap on the way through. Let's come stand up. Put your strap around your neck for a moment. And move into Tadasana. Big toes touch, heels slightly apart, lift and fan the toes. Find the stability of your yogi feet. Big toe knuckle, fifth toe knuckle, heel like a tripod of the foot presses the earth. Remember, we've got the cuboid bone on the side of the foot. Maybe you can even see it as I push my cuboids into the earth. The middle arch, medial arch, inspires. Energy down to the earth, energy rising. Tighten your quads a bit. Some pillars to stand on. I'm going to turn to the side here. As I push my thighs back, my low back finds its arch. 
Then you'll take your tailbone and push it straight to the earth. All those deep muscles pull in. Take your arms back behind you. Squeeze that imaginary marble between the butt cheeks again, maybe 20% of your strength. Little fingers touch the thighs. The palms spin towards the thighs, middle fingers down towards the heels. Feel the energy release into the earth, but feel the rise towards the sky. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel the stability and sense of containment that Tadasana provides us. Good. Let's turn back to front. Take your strap now. Touch the strap to the front of your pelvis. Your hands are about shoulder distance apart. Find Tadasana. Inhale the arms up. And if you can, pass over without wiggle worming through it so that the strap catches you on the bottom of your rib cage and it's trapped between your elbows and your side body. Inhale. On the exhale, I'm gonna push my hands forward, but I'm gonna push my low ribs back to the strap and your whole low belly pulls in. Release that big wide arms, take them up and around and touch the front of the pelvis again. If that felt like it was easy enough, then take your hands in a little closer. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, take it back behind you. Oh, yummy, feel that circumduction of our shoulders. Inhale. On the exhale, push the hands forward, ribs back into the strap, low belly engagement. Release. And back they go. Okay, right elbow bent over the crown of your head, left hand grabs the strap. Inhale, and on the exhale, pull down on the strap with the left hand and find that side body opening, the whole rib cage. Inhale through center, exhale, reverse, left elbow, crown of the head, and pull over. Good, go back and forth. I'm just bending my knees so you can see my arm. I'd rather you stay in Tadasana if possible. Back and forth a few times. Let's meet back. Left side pull. And then this time, shift your hips over to the side a bit. So right through down to lateral thigh. Inhale back up. Exhale, just rib cage. And then add the hip to it. A few times back and forth with that. First, just ribs and side body down into lateral thigh and back. Good. Take your straps now, guys, underneath your armpits for our thoracic mobilizations. The strap, in effect, here is going to catch you at one of the levels in that thoracic spine, right in the middle where it's so stiff. Look up for a moment. What I'd like to see is this kind of movement rather than low back and neck. Inhale, and on the exhale, push your hands forward and up towards the sky to lock that thoracic spine in place, and then move your heart towards the sky. Feel that opening of that upper back, beautiful. Go ahead and flex the segment now, and then go back into extension, pushing forward and up, Oh my goodness, and back bend. Take the strap now down just one level. It's maybe a quarter inch. Inhale, exhale, push forward and up. Bring your heart towards the heavens. Flex. Heart towards the heavens. Flex. And then do three more on your own now. Back down to the next level. Do two repetitions of each. And I'll catch you in just a few moments. Extending by pushing the hands forward and up, flexing, and then moving it down the next level.
Okay. Let's look at something else here today. <laughs> Hi, baby. The internal rotation of your shoulder. So take your arms. I'm just going to kneel down so you can see what I'm doing here. Take your right arm back behind you and see where your thumb goes to. Which vertebrae can you touch on your thoracic spine? And then do your other arm and see where that one touches. They'll probably be vastly different. Your dominant arm, which is my right, doesn't go up quite as high. So let's see what we can do to inspire a little bit more of that opening. So do it again, see where your hand goes to, and then see where the other one goes to. And then let's try this. Take, let's do the right arm first. Take your left hand on the top of the right forearm. Go ahead and pull it down first, so direct it towards the floor. And then see if you can take your hand up a little bit higher. Use the other hand to pull the elbow down towards the floor without contorting too much. And then bring the hand a little bit higher. So I can feel that I'm up at least another two levels. Let's go ahead and release that arm down and do the other one now. Bend the left, take the right hand and pull the left elbow down and then take it up a little bit higher. Pull the elbow down and then take it a little bit higher. Release the arms again and see what's happened. Can you get that hand to go higher? Maybe. So that's a really great way to get the internal rotation. Do what you can do now. Either grab your opposite elbows or some of you can maybe do namaste hands, which slide up the back. I'm not quite there right now. So grab the elbows or your namaste hands. And look what it does. It puts you into this beautiful extension of your upper back trying to keep the low ribs in again so you're not coming into a big low back bend. And take the arms back behind you. Find that internal rotation. Good. Let your arms release to your side now. You can stay standing and just turn thumbs back, palms in. Find that elegance, grace, and the movement in the shoulders. Okay, let's move into camel. It's like somebody has stolen my yoga mat here. So, I'm gonna have to ask you to move, Missy. Good. Curl your toes under, push your hips towards the front of the room, and take your hands into the small of your back. Fingers on the buttocks, elbows in nice and tight. Push the hands down, and push your pelvis forward, big open heart. Maybe stay here. If you feel like you can take your hands back to your heels without leaning too far back, then do that. Maybe stock up, stack up some blocks. Pull the ribs in, open the big heart, shoulders release back, and maybe add the head to it now. Look back. Come on back to neutral with the gaze. Pull yourself to neutral. Let's do one more of those exactly the same. Push the hips forward. Hands to the buttocks, push down, elbows stay in, lift, big heart. Hands release back to heels, maybe elbows stay in, big open heart, and maybe let your head release back. Back to neutral. Let's move into a low lunge. Take your left foot forward on your mat. Your foot is forward of your knee, right leg back. Hands on your pelvis. Inhale. On your exhale, push your right foot down into the mat. That's your anchor. With your anchor laid down, then bring the left knee forward. And what's going to happen is you'll stretch the right hip flexor rather than going into too much of a low back arch. Inhale the right hand up. Look up at your hand. Find your balance here by a stable back foot and front foot and back bend. We've done lots of this thoracic opening, right? Bring your gaze back to neutral, put your hand back on your hip, come back onto your right knee. Pull up your egg, pull in your belly so that when you switch your legs, you're not wobbly, but nice and stable. Right foot forward of the knee. 
Inhale, and on the exhale, the left foot presses the earth as you draw the right knee forward, a big stretch of your left hip flexors. So again, reminding you not to go deep into your low back, but try to get the stretch across the front. Inhale, the left hand up and back behind. Back to neutral, hand on the pelvis, come into neutral, we'll switch to the same side again, find your core stability, switch the legs. Inhale, exhale, top of the right foot presses the earth. You draw the left knee forward to stretch open the front of the right hip flexors. Inhale, the right hand up and back. Bring your hand back to neutral, it's straight out in front of you. Please try not to round your back, but instead inhale and on your exhale, Flex the left hip and come forward from a deeper hip crease, not a rounded spine. Reach way out with that right hand. And if you can, take the right elbow outside of the left knee and put your palms together. See if you can take your thumbs and put your thumbs onto your heart and your left elbow, the archer's elbow, to the sky. Rotate through that rib cage and look up. Come back out of that, inhale, exhale, onto the knee, switch legs back again. Inhale, exhale, top of left foot presses the earth, right knee goes forward, we open up that whole hip flexor complex. Inhale, the left hand up and back. Exhale, reach forward with the hand. Don't round the spine, but come forward from flexion of the right hip and those same spinal curves. Inhale and on your exhale, take your left elbow outside the right knee. Your palms are together. The thumbs go under the heart and the right elbow goes up to that. Use the left elbow to promote a little bit more of the twist. Come back into that. Back around, inhale back up to tall position. Legs come back together, sit back for a moment in your Virasana, hands come back, lift your pelvis, maybe your hips are very different than they were at the beginning. And let's move into modified gait pose, kind of a combination of a lot of what we've done. You're on your knees, take your right foot out to the right side and see if you can find a straight knee. Let's start with toes up and slide your heel far away from you, yeah. Take your right hand under the top of your right thigh, not the pelvis, but the thigh, and push it down. I can just feel my whole hip release. Push the hip down, and as you push down, lift the crown of the head. Inhale the left hand up. We've just done much of this. Now we're just going to combine the different positions. See if you can slide the right hand down the right leg as the left arm comes overhead. Look into the left armpit. Keep sliding the right hand, reaching with the left fingertips. Inhale back up and reverse. Take the right hand up, inhale, and on the exhale, pull away from the foot. Pull back to center. And let's see if we can let the right foot down towards the earth now and repeat the same thing. Inhale, up, left arm. Exhale, come across. Maybe finding some new spots in these bodies of ours, right? Bring the heel back again, draw the leg in, and reverse the legs. Take left knee out. Start with a straight knee and the toes are up. Inhale the right arm up. On the exhale, use your left hand, push that hip down and come cross town. Inhale back up. Exhale reverse, come away from it. Inhale back to center, exhale, push down on the hip, let the left foot plant our flex, trying to drive the sole of the foot towards the earth, inhale. Exhale, come across. Inhale back to center and bring your legs back to neutral. Sit back, Narasana, same thing. Lean back, this time onto the tops of your feet. Release the thighs down. Okay, I'll meet you on your back. We'll take our legs up into tabletop. 
truly the combination of all that we just did right over left for eagle legs foot behind calf heels down on the ground let's use the right leg to stretch the left side body inhale on your exhale your right leg is going to draw your legs to the right and we'll get a nice stretch of our quadratus lumborum down into a muscle called tensor fascia lata in your hip bring the legs back to neutral let's roll it now inhale on the exhale, my left hand goes on the outside of my right thigh, and I'm going to roll over onto my left side. My knee's going to go on the ground. This is going to be very familiar from our open book. Your whole body's on the left side here now. I'm going to take my right hand onto my heart. I'm going to inhale, and on my exhale, take my elbow up to the sky and rotate through. We did it, except our legs were in a different position. See if you can feel all your body parts have opened up now. You can use that left elbow, cheat or uh, assist, pushing the elbow into the earth, lifting the heart. Oh my goodness, find that rotation. Amazing what we can do for our bodies with a little bit of attention, right? Pause for a moment here. Inhale the right hand up, imprint it onto the left palm, slide it through. Draw the hand back again, roll back onto your back. Same exact thing, opposite legs. 90, 90, 90, hip, knees and ankles. Take lefty over righty this time. Foot behind calf or not, heels on the ground, toes up. Use lefty to stretch righty first, inhale. On the exhale, left leg will draw the right leg towards the left. Feel that delicious stretch of the right hip, maybe even into your sacroiliac area. Bring the legs back to neutral, inhale. On your exhale, right hand on the outside of left thigh, roll your whole body over onto your right side. Left knee stays on the ground, left elbow up to the sky, inhale and on your exhale. Do your rotation through that thoracic spine. We've spent so much love and time on it. Bend your right elbow, push your elbow into the earth and rotate, mm, elbow into the earth and rotate. Maybe unfurl the arms, the flags, open. And have the left hand up, grab the cloud off the sky, imprint it onto your palm, roll back onto your back, uncross your legs, stretch your legs really long out on the floor and take your arms up over your head. Oh man, love our yoga practice, love our community. A little bit of time and effort in our practice yields so much benefit. Hopefully your mind is freer now. Some of the worry and fear and angst is released. Bring your arms to your sides. Grab your mat with your fists. Inhale. On your exhale, push your hands towards your feet. Your body will slink up the mat a bit into your Shavasana. I encourage you to cover yourself with a blanket if you're at all cold. If you've got an eye bag or a towel around, put it over your eyes. The power of our practice, the magic of our practice. Every time it's different. We never know what to expect, what will come up, what we'll discover, what will be an amazing new awareness to our bodies. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. It's a still calming point. Trace the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Now find all the lines and grooves, you're stimulating your relaxation system. Let your tongue release to the bottom of your mouth now. We know this. Soft mouth. No tongue, no teeth, no gripping, no grinding. Feel yourself held by the earth, by your space, in the comfort of your home. This yoga tool of ours 
to keep our minds calm, to be able to hold perspective, to be able to drift off for a few minutes here and there to reboot. So let yourself free for a few minutes here. Go out to one of your favorite places. Maybe you're in one of your favorite places right now. Just surrender. Allow yourself to deepen into that beautiful relaxation zone. No one will take as good care of yourself as you, showing up for your practice day after day, whether it's five minutes or 90 minutes or three hours, just showing up. We all know sometimes it's difficult to get to our mats, but once you do, the reward is tremendous. Find the marble on the back of your skull. It's the center of the skull. Let your head rock side to side very slowly just to wake the system. You might begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes now. Bring your physical body back around. When you're ready, bend your knees, slide your heels towards your buttocks, and roll over onto your right side, away from your hearts for our transition position, our Mother's Day transition position. Bringing up thoughts of generosity, of kindness, of altruism, of seva. Maybe for a moment here, think of one or maybe 10 of your favorite memories of your mom. Whether she was the one sitting in the stands while you were playing Little League Baseball or her big, bright, smiling face as you're accomplishing all of your milestones or maybe just being there when you were sad. See if you can hold on to the picture of the visage, the face of your real mom or someone who you think of your mom as you slowly bring yourself back up into your seated place, carry them with you. 
Today is a day to remember our moms. For all of you moms out there practicing, a very happy Mother's Day to you. Take your hands to the earth, fingertips press, sit bones press. We feel the rise and the connection. Bring the energy up into your heart center, thumbs to the heart. The heart rises. We pause here, reminding ourselves to be so grateful for all we have. Inhale. On your exhale, let your hands float forward, fingertips touch, fingernails touch, hands open like a lotus. Bring the mom sweetness into your hearts. Backs of the hands roll, thumbs to the heart. Take your thumbs up to your third eye. It's a still contemplation point, an all-seeing eye. Our ESP eye and our clarity spot. Let's bow to the moms. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, yogis. Thank you, dogs. I'm going to hang out for a little bit after just to say to hi to a few of you. And our workshop Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, is going to be on shoulders. So talking about the importance of the stability of the shoulders and the strength of the shoulders in our practice, whether it's hands on the ground or what you're doing when you bring your arms up over your head. Have a glorious rest of your Mother's Day, mothers and all, and I'll see you Wednesday and hopefully back here again next Sunday too. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Namaste. Harvey. Bye, Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I recruited my sister. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Angela, Janet, Tamara. Thank you, Harvey. Lucy. Yes. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. <laughs> Harvey. Lucy. Oh. Thanks, Harvey. Good to see you. Hey, Linda. I can see you too, honey. Great to see you. You too. Happy I love the dogs. I, the cat, our cat was here. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank Thanks, Harvey. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Harvey. My pleasure. Hey, Matt. Bye. Thank you. Swedish chicks. <laughs> Howie, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. I'm so limber. Hi, Hi Harvey. Got another Swedish girl. Mocha. That's my sister. Hi. Hi. That's, That's my sister. Day. I couldn't oh, do this. I couldn't do Wait, it. Wait, it's Mocha. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Mocha is cute. Hey, Karen. Hey, Harvey. Missing you. Hi, honey. How are you? Mm -hmm. Good Very to see good. you. Oh, good. So oh, great. I love this. <laughs> Me too. See Mother's Day. Okay, Thanks. Yeah. Got a good one. All okay, right. guys. Happy Mother's Bye. Day. Uh, thank Bye, you. Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. My, si Peaceful. my sister loved it. My sister will come again. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye-bye.